Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dakota Jet channel. In today's video I'll be giving you a full overview of my Airbus home cockpit, from how I built the structure, what materials I used and some useful details if you're thinking about putting something similar together yourself. It's not going to be a super technical deep dive or a full setup of plans just yet, that's something I'll release in a later video but I'll walk you through the key measurements, materials and design choices that make up the cockpit as you see it today. So, starting with the main structure. Everything is made out of 12mm plywood. I decided to build the cockpit in a modular fashion, starting with the central section where the ECAM screens are and then expanding out to the left and the right sides. Originally, it was a full width setup but I later removed the right hand section just to make a bit more space in the room. The overall dimensions are roughly as follows. Overall length 110cm Overall width 44cm Overall height to the base of the glare shield 80cm and the glare shield sticks out from the main instrument panel approximately 15cm. Everything has been built in sections so that I can move or modify things easily when I need to, which has come in handy on more than one occasion. The monitors are all mounted using offcuts of plywood. Simple, cheap and sturdy enough to hold everything in place. The main instrument panel itself is just one straight cut of 3mm plywood with 3D printed bezels glued on top to give it that finished Airbus look. I then continued building the glare shield section using a mix of self-built components and some parts from Winwing. They really helped tie the upper cockpit together. The pedestal is also made from 12mm plywood, again a mix of self-built and Winwing and Flight Sim PM components. It's powered by four Elego Mega cards and one BBI32 board, which handle all the switches, LEDs and other inputs from the custom panels. The upper part of the pedestal is angled like the real aircraft, but overall it's slightly smaller just to fit the space I have available. The pedestal dimensions are as follows. Length 75cm Width 56 centimeters, height at the highest point 42 centimeters, and height at the lowest point 36 centimeters. It's also worth mentioning that the pedestal isn't physically connected to the main instrument panel frame, that way I can make alterations or move it easily for transport. The side stick box is again built from 12 mm plywood. Nothing too fancy, just sturdy and functional. As with all the wooden parts of this project, sanding and undercoating are essential before painting. I used a basic wood undercoat from B&Q. For the frame parts, like underneath where the rudder pedals are, I used a furniture paint from B&Q straight off the shelf. For the panels and the main instrument panel, I used a wood paint that was colour matched online to RAL 7031, which gives that proper Airbus cockpit tone. The seat setup is a bit more budget friendly. It's actually an old van seat I picked up for about £20 off Facebook Marketplace. It wasn't the cleanest when I got it, so I gave the upholstery a good clean and then mounted it onto a wooden frame, mostly made from leftover plywood offcuts. It's definitely not the prettiest part of the cockpit right now, but it works perfectly fine and gives me space underneath for storage. The rails on the seat still work too, so I can slide it forward and backward as needed. The seat height from floor is roughly 48cm, which puts me at just about the right eye level for the displays. So that's a quick look at the overall structure and layout of my Airbus home cockpit. How it's built, what it's made of, and how it all fits together. I'll be releasing detailed build plans and drawings later on once I've got them finalised, but hopefully this gives you a good sense of how it all comes together. In next week's video we will be doing a full breakdown of the total cost of this entire setup. 
every major component and what it all came down to in the end. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Monday at 9am UK time for the next one.